Hello everyone and welcome to our dual enrollment informational session with York County Community College. I'm joined here today with some of our fabulous panelists. Um, we have Denise Young, who is work, working in academic affairs and is supporting our dual enrollment students this summer. I have Danielle Ebrecht, who is the director of our Student Success Commons. Give them a wave, Danielle, so they can see you. And Denise, too, thank you. <laughs> um, we have Sophie Hang, who is one of our fabulous student success coaches. And we have Ruby Wood, who is a recent graduate of Stanford High School, um, who's going to talk to us about her experiences taking college courses and how it helped her get on track for her college degree. Um, so we're pretty excited about this. So first, let's talk about some of the basics. Um, these are questions that we usually get early on. So for example, what is dual enrollment? Dual enrollment is when you are enrolled in both a college course and you are still a high school student. So a lot of times this means that you can also get credit for the college course at your high school. So it's good for you to start planning with your guidance counselor um, to see if there's courses that you can substitute out instead of taking a high school course, maybe you could take it as a college course instead on your schedule. Concurrent enrollment is when you take a course that is offered through the college, but it's offered at your high school and typically taught by one of the instructors who's qualified at your high school. So this could be um, in the tech center or it could be something like a college composition class that's taught during the day at your high school by one of your instructors. And finally, what is early college? Early college is all encompassing. It means that you're taking early college courses. Um, so if you are taking college courses while you're in high school, you're taking them early, which is really exciting. So let's talk a little bit about AP versus uh, college course. AP is the opportunity for you to take college level material and then you are given a score after you take a test, typically in the spring. Um, and based on that score, that lets you know whether or not you're receiving college credit. Um, they're rigorous and they're awesome. Um, and one of the things I tell students is that AP courses um, offer you a different level of experience than you probably have had so far in your high school. One of the things I'd also say is that if you take a college course, so if you're taking a course out of college, the difference is that your score, your grade at the end, is based on the body of the work that you do. So it's not based just on one test, it's based on everything that you've done throughout that semester. So if you're someone who gets a little bit nervous about just taking tests, taking a college course and getting that full college experience in a college classroom might be a good choice for you. Um, the next question I typically get is where do I take these classes? So normally I would tell you that you could take them at our, your high school or at our campus or on our Stanford campus. Um, however, this fall because of COVID, we are mostly remote. So we have mostly online courses this fall. We are offering them in a different variety. So you could take a traditional online course, which um, does not have any required Zoom times or meeting times. Um, we do have courses with options where there are scheduled Zoom times where you and your classmates and your professors will all log in together at the same time and you'll go over the course instructions for that day. You also have the opportunity to take courses that have a Zoom, but you don't have to go, they're recorded for you. So you can, if you can't make the Zoom for some reason, you can always go back and watch it after. Really what it makes sense to do is look at what's best for you and for your schedule and to see um, how organized you are um, ahead of time. Sometimes it's nice having a, a day a week that you have to check in with somebody. Um, how long are the classes? So typical courses are 15 weeks. Um, we work County Community College does have a second fall term, which is seven weeks. We typically recommend if this is your first college course, you should be looking at a 15 week class. Um, seven week classes are um, more intense because it's fitting all of that material into a shorter time frame. So you might think about taking a 15 week course for starters. Um, and how much credit do I get for each course? So um, most of our college courses are three college credits. Um, with the exception of some of our lab classes. And because they are longer and you're spending more time in the classroom for instructional time, you get more credit. So those end up usually typically being four. I am going to pass over my screen very shortly here to Denise. Nope, Sophie. <laughs> Sorry. So go ahead. No worries. Um, yeah, so what grade does my student need to be in to take college courses? So you're probably wondering, can my high school student take college courses or not? Um, so typically students need to be a junior or a senior to take um, college courses at YCCC. However, there are exceptions for underclassmen um, and that exception may be granted based on the school's assessment and recommendation of the readiness of the student for these college courses. Um, so if you have any questions about that, Denise can probably answer them. Um, um, and then are there GPA requirements? Um, the suggested GPA for those students who wish to enroll in the program is a 
3.0 or higher on a four point scale. Um, with that noted, if they are at least a junior, guidance counselors may recommend them for a specific course that might align with the student's areas of interest or areas of strength, excuse me. Um, what are prerequisites? Um, so we do offer a lot of courses, but many courses do have prerequisites. So if, you're a stu if your student is looking to take a course, they want to make note of any prerequisites that the course has. Um, a prerequisite being a requirement or course or courses a student has to meet before they can enroll in that course. Um, so for classes like English and math or for courses that may have English and math as a prerequisite, um, we generally use PSAT or SAT scores to identify whether a student has met that prerequisite. If a student has not taken the PSAT or SAT and given the pandemic, it is very unlikely that they have. Um, a guidance counselor or a teacher who based on the knowledge of the student's academic performance, assessment, and preparedness could potentially recommend the student. So don't worry if your student does not have scores, we will work with you and your high school to identify the student's readiness for the course. Um, another thing to note is that at YCCC, we also have a limit to the number of dual enrollment students that can be enrolled in a course. So for courses like English, math, psychology, non-career type courses, we can enroll up to half of the course capacity. So if a course has 20 seats, we can only fill 10 of those. Um, for career courses, say like vet tech, culinary, precision machining, we can only fill up to a quarter of available seats in the course. So about 25% of the seats. Um, so those two things are kind of important to note when you're searching for classes. Sometimes the courses may look like it has an opening, but if the course has a prerequisite, they have to meet that first. And if the course has already reached its maximum number of dual enrollment students in a course, then they could potentially also be, that could potentially also be something that might prevent them from registering for a specific course. But for the most part, we're almost always able to place students in a course. Um, yeah, so that's, I think that's it. So you're probably wondering what's next, how much does it cost? Um, I think Denise will be able to answer your questions. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, if you're wondering how much it costs, I'm happy to tell you that thanks to our state grant funding, uh, Maine public high school students and registered homeschoolers are able to enroll in up to 12 credits per year at no cost. Um, and if they do go over that 12 credits, we're still able to offer a really low early college rate of $48 a credit, which is about half of our regular tuition. So, and we also waive the fees on that. This is new this year. So if guidance counselors and parents are paying attention, um, this is a change from what we've been doing in the past. So you definitely want to take advantage of that early college rate if you do want to go over. Um, for private school and out-of-state high school students, we, we still offer a very low in-state tuition rate of $96 per credit plus fees. And I'm hearing that the average cost of fees is about $124-ish. Um, so this same rate would also apply to high school exchange students living with families. So if you have any of those in your home, um, consider that they still can come in and, and take courses with us. In terms of books, most students are going to be responsible for providing the books uh, for their courses. However, we do have some concurrent enrollment partnerships where the school has elected to provide those books for the course. Um, and then the last thing, I, I really like the question of um, how much can you save more than how much does it cost? So I'd like to ask Danielle, our director of the Student Success Commons, to just talk a little bit about her experience with the dual enrollment program in terms of cost savings. Thanks, Denise. Um, I am really happy to talk about my experience as a, as a homeschool mom and a dual enrollment mom. Um, I homeschooled my daughter for her junior and senior years of high school, and she went off to a four-year private liberal arts college in Florida. She went off with 35 credits um, that she had taken, many of, you know, in English composition, several math classes, introduction to psychology, a lot of gen ed requirements. Um, we paid about $1,500 for books and fees, and we transferred in over a year of academic coursework and saved over $32,000. So 
to me, it's a no brainer. It's a huge cost savings. And the transfer process was so easy. You just work with the college and it was um, super seamless and simple. So we saved $32,000 in tuition money. Oh, and I'm up again. So as Kate and Denise have mentioned, I am the director of the Student Success Commons at York County Community College. And what is that? The Student Success Commons is a one-stop shop for you to come for any academic support that you need to be a successful student. And I think what most dual and concurrent enrollment students don't realize or forget maybe is that you are actually even though you're in high school, you are a college student. You are a YCCC college student. And therefore, you are able to take advantage of all of the amazing support services that we have to offer. We have an amazing library with fantastic librarians who can help you do your research paper and research sources for you. We have tutoring in just about any subject that you can think of, um, math, writing for any subject, sciences, computers, online support. Um, and because we're because it's uh, we're doing most of our work remotely this year or this semester, um, we're doing all of our services online, and you can just connect with our tutors online. Um, also, in the Student Success Commons is the office for uh, students with disability services. And as a dual enrollment student, when you come to our campus, we want to work with you. If you have a documented disability, we're happy to do that. Um, after you register for a course, you just make an appointment and we'll work out a documentation plan for you um, with your accommodations. If you are a concurrent enrollment student, you work with your high school and your IEP or your 504 um, is what you use for your accommodations for a concurrent enrollment class. I think that's all I have. So I think I'm back up again, um, just to talk about how many classes do students take. And I can tell you that we certainly have many students who are going to take full advantage of those 12 free credits per year. Um, and then we also have uh, some students and parents who are electing to pay for that additional course so they can save money later on college. So for instance, if you wanted to set a goal, like Danielle and her daughter, if you wanted to set a goal of one year um, being completed, that would work out to be about five classes in an academic year for both junior and senior year. Um, so if you spread that out across our various terms, you could have some flexibility in how that's scheduled. But if, if you think about it as maybe two in the fall, two in the spring, and one in the summer, or any combination of the terms that we offer, as long as you get five in, then when they graduate after two years, they will graduate with 30 credits, which then could put them into that standing of being a second year student in college. Um, so if, if you are eligible for the scholarship, four of those five courses per year are paid for, which is really nice. Um, and then we have other students that just want to take a few classes while they're in high school and lighten their load maybe down the road. And so when they're starting college for the first time, um, it's nice to have a little lighter load and maybe they want to work a full time, uh, part time job and uh, uh, or just focus on their studies and take some pressure off. So that's always nice. Um, and then we also have students that will use our dual enrollment program to sort of fast track the completion of a degree or certificate. Um, so we do have high school students now who are taking required courses for one of our programs. Um, and then once they graduate from high school, they know that they can just come back to us and take what's remaining for their courses. Um, this is something my daughter actually did and was able to finish her associate's degree when she was 18, which is super cool. Uh, now she's ready to go on um, anywhere for a four-year degree. So um, then we also have a student today with us, Maria, um, and I wanted to just give her um, an opportunity in a few minutes to talk, but um, she was able to participate in a program with one of our local CTE centers and graduated from high school with a college cer certificate. So she actually graduated from both high school and college at the same time, which was really impressive. Um, we worked very hard to get that partnership up and running. So we were very proud to have eight of them graduate this, this last summer. Um, we have 
programs with uh, Sanford Regional Technical Center. We have two certificate programs coming on board in the fall with Biddeford Regional Center of Technology. So if you have any questions about those programs, I encourage you to either contact your local area CTE center or you can certainly um, contact me and I'm happy to chat with you after this. Um, and uh, also, um, I just wanna mention that um, there are specific courses uh, that people like to take. So I'm gonna just throw it back to Kate and kind of let her talk about um, the courses that, that students will prefer. Muted. It would help if I unmuted myself. So as you start thinking about taking college courses while you're in high school, it's important to take courses with purpose. Um, so you can use your courses as a way to explore a field that you're interested in. And you can also use them to start accumulating some of your general education credit. So if you're looking at this graphic, what I like about this is it gives you a pathway of things that you might think about. So you're thinking you might want to work with students. Okay, so here are some of the early college options that you might think about um, within the main community college system. Here are some of the classes that you have. Um, we do have some education courses at YCCC that you could take. Um, and then here are some of the two-year degree options that you could then move into as well. So as you're starting to map out your plan and really gain momentum toward um, getting your credits and thinking about taking college courses, again, it's important to start thinking about it with purpose. Um, you want to make sure that you're taking the right stuff. So um, Denise, did you want to introduce um, Maria so she had a chance to talk a little bit about her story? Sure. I'm going to let Maria do a lot of the talking because what she's done is really exciting and impressive. Um, and I had the pleasure of getting to know her while we were um, working this year. Um, and I'm just so proud of her and her classmates for, for all that they were able to accomplish. Um, some of them walked away with a couple of industry certifications along with a full college certificate, which is super impressive. Um, and I know she's going to do great um, in her mechanical engineering degree. I'm excited to see her do that. So Maria, if you would unmute yourself and just um, maybe say hello to everybody and talk to us a little bit about um, what you did, what your program was, and, and maybe what your experience with our concurrent enrollment program looked like. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Maria and um, I graduated from Stanford High School this year and I worked with YCCC through my SRTC program at Stanford High School. And I was in the engineering and architectural department through SRTC, which is one of my favorite departments. and I had a wonderful time with it, but specifically with the engineering, the uh, certificate that I got through YCCC, it was such an amazing opportunity. And originally going into it, I didn't think that I was going to end up with so much that I actually got and I didn't think that I was going to end up with a certificate and I was like oh I'm going into this and I'm going to get a few credits for college and that's such a wonderful thing but we worked so well together um, and I was able to graduate with a certificate through YCCC and I am so beyond proud of all the people that made that happen and also of my um, peers and all of them who graduated with me but specifically about the program itself it was so so easy to do personally because it was a wonderful program it was step by step and i went through a specific program that they offered through tooling university where i was able to on top of the classwork that i had take about 30 minutes aside or 30 minutes to an hour through my classwork um, and i was able to go through that for two years but i mostly focused on it in my second year or my senior year of high school and I did a lot of work with that and I was able to study and compile a bunch of notes together and use that towards the kind of large exam at the end of the year, which was a little intimidating to a high school student taking sort of a college exam. But I was able to uh, pass with flying colors and I just put in a moderate amount of effort every single day and taking this course, it shouldn't be overwhelming to you because um, obviously, everyone handles coursework differently, but if you just dedicate yourself to this and set aside a little bit of time every single day, it's definitely possible for every single student in high school who wants to achieve something. You just have to put your mind to it and really dedicate yourself to it, and then you can graduate with either some um, credits or a full certificate like I did, which I'm super grateful for. Thank you, Marie. Um, thanks for coming and, and sharing with us. Um, if you missed what her program was, she actually participated in the um, architectural and engineering design 
program's uh, mechanical drafting certificate. So that was what she, she had earned through us, um, as well as the other seven who were with her. So um, that's just one example of, of a concurrent enrollment partnership that we have with um, a school in our county. Um, we have lots of other partnerships too, where we offer single courses at numerous high schools, uh, some, some of them during the day and after school, um, as well as everything that we have um, on our YCCC campus, which will be mostly remote, but still Still on our remote campus. So um, if you have any questions after that, feel, uh, please feel free to just contact me. My email, I think, is on the screen, dyoung at yccc.edu. Uh, we very much appreciate you tuning in and listening, and we're happy to help um, you and your, your child, or if you're a guidance counselor, thank you for attending. Homeschoolers, we got you. We have experienced homeschoolers on this panel. Um, we can help guide you to the right courses. So thank you very much, and have a good evening.